In today's video, we will learn how to add passwordless authentication and user management to our Next.js 13 application. And what we will build is a simple example application that will have the login and logout functionality and also a profile page that will display the logged in user's information. And all this is done using 100% the Next.js 13 app router. After this video, you should have a good understanding on how to easily add authentication and user management to your own Next.js 13 application. I highly recommend that you follow along and also code the application with me while watching this video. I will leave all the necessary links and timestamps to the video description down below so you can jump around in the video. Okay, but now let's get started. First, let's create a fresh Next.js project. And I will not use TypeScript this time, not ESLint, but I will use the Tailwind CSS to add some styles. And let's use the SRC folder also, and of course the app router. Once that's run, let's open it up in VS Code. And before we do anything else, let's clean up the project a little bit. So I will open up the page.js and I will remove everything from here so that the page just displays the welcome to the front page text. So I will save that and then I will also open up the globals.css file and remove everything from here except the tailwind parts up there like this. Let's save it and let's fire up the dev server and see what this looks like. And switch to the browser and open it up. We get the welcome to the front page text. That's good. So now we have a fresh Next.js project ready. So next, let's see how we can add the authentication. And for the authentication, we will use Kind. Kind will provide all the authentication and user management stuff for our application. And honestly, it's super easy to use and get started with it. So let's see how we can do that. And before we get any further, I just want to say thank you to Kind for also sponsoring this week's video. So to get started, you can create a free account by clicking up here the start for free button. And after that, you can fill in your details or use the social logins to get your account set up. So I have already created an account, so I will just log in to my own account right now. And once you have your account set up and you are logged in, let's next open up this blog post Next.js App Router SDK. You can find a link for this in the description. So let's go through this together. So first of all, in order to add the authentication for our application, we need to install this kind out Next.js package. So I will actually do that right now. So I will copy that and switch to the VS code and paste it in here, yarn add like this and let's install it. And once that's run, let's switch back to the browser and see. So next we need to set a callback URL and we need an application inside of kind to do this. So let's next create that application and add these URLs into it. So inside of my kind account, I will open up the settings and from there I will click the applications and inside here I will click the add application button and give this application a name and we want to have it as a regular web application so I will select that. Let's click save and now we have our application created inside of kind and we can see we have all these app keys over here and we also have these callback URL fields down here. So let's see the blog post. So for the allowed callback URLs, let's copy this one like this. And then for the logout redirect, we will just use the localhost 3000 over here like this. Let's click save. So now we have our application set up inside of kind. So let's see the blog post. So in order to use the authentication, we need these environment variables inside of our application. So what I will do now is copy everything from here and switch to the VS code. And let's create a new file to the root of the directory called .env.local like this and paste everything inside of here. So if you don't know, this is an environment variable file. So we can define environment variables that our code can use inside of here. So now we can see there are some values that we need to input. So we need the client ID, client secret, and the kind issuer URL. So let's input those. So I will go back to the browser 
and to my application details. And over here, we can see the domain. Let's copy it and paste it in over here. And then we have the client ID. Let's copy that, paste it in over here. And the client secret, let's copy it and paste it in over here like this. Everything looks good. For this login redirect URL, I will actually change this from dashboard to profile and you will see soon why. So let's save this and we can close this file now and let's switch back to the blog post and see what to do next. So next we need an API endpoint and this might be familiar for you if you have used next auth or similar but this time we can actually define it inside the app directory. So previously we have had to define it inside the pages slash API directory, but thanks to the new kind SDK, we no longer need to do that. So we can just create this file over here. So I will do just that. So I will copy this and switch to the VS code and just click over here and new file and paste in the path for it. So it creates the file road.js. And next, let's copy everything we have over here to the file like this. So this file will be the auth endpoint that handles all the authentication stuff. So we actually don't need to do anything ourselves for this file anymore. So let's just save it and close it. Okay, let's switch back to the browser and see the blog post. So next up is adding the sign up and sign in buttons. But before we do this, let's add a little bit of HTML to our application and some styling for it. So it looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna switch back to the VS code. And now we have the front page, but I will actually open up the layout.js and modify this HTML over here a little bit. So I will do that and let's see it through together. All right. So only thing I did here was to add this main over here and add some Tailwind CSS classes for it for the styling. So if you are following along, you can pause the video and just write out those two. Let's save this and see what it looks like. So I will open up the front page. Okay, so now we have all the content centered except this navigation here. So let's add something over there too. So right now I just added this navigation here text but what I'm going to do is actually create a new component for the navigation. So I'm just going to write in navigation over here and let's create that component. So I'm going to create a new file inside of the SRC folder like this. So inside the SRC folder, I now have a components folder and the navigation.js file. And let me add some code over here and let's go through together after that. All right. So what I have here is just the nav element and some Tailwind styles for it. And then I have just a placeholder text for the sign in, sign up and log out. And then I also added a link for the front page down here. So let's save this and switch back to the layout file. And inside of here, we need to still import that navigation component. So let's do that like so. And let's save this, switch back to the browser and see what it looks like. So now we have the placeholders for the buttons and then we have the link and the actual content of the page. Okay, so this is good. So next, let's add the actual buttons for the sign in, sign up and log out. So let's see the blog post. So we can add the sign up and sign in buttons with kind. So all we have to do is import those from the kind package. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go to the navigation and paste in that import and then we can use them like this. So I will copy these and switch back to the VS code and paste them in right here. Let's save it and see the browser. So now we have two buttons over there and let's actually add some styles for them too so they look a bit nicer. Okay, so I added these Tailwind classes for them. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, that looks better. And one thing I need to do over here is if we go back to the kind account and I go home and then to the organizations. So you can have multiple organizations inside of your kind account. And I currently have a couple of those. And if you just created your account, you probably just have the default organization and that's fine. But for me, I want to use this Tuomos Next.js organization. And what I'm gonna do is copy this code for the organization 
so this is unique ID and then switch back to the VS code and for the login link and the register link I will provide a prop called org code and pass in that organization ID so for the login link and register link like this and this is because I have multiple organizations and I want to register the users for this organization but if you have only this one default organization you don't have to provide this org code oh and it's actually org code so I have a typo there let's fix it so what I was saying is that if you only have that one organization or you want to register a user for this default organization uh, you don't have to pass in this code because since it's default organization the users will automatically be logged in and registered for that organization so you don't have to provide this but for me because I have multiple organizations in my account I need to provide this like this okay so let's save this and switch back to the browser and give it a go let's see if it works so I'm gonna actually just refresh the page and let's click the sign in button okay so now we see an error message saying that we don't have a way to authenticate at the moment so there's one more thing we need to do inside of our account so let's switch back to the kind account and actually go to the organizations and open up your organization and from here we need to check this allow registration so we want to allow users to register for this organization so let's save it and then let's go home and settings and applications and open up your application from there and inside of there is the authentication page so inside of here we need to still enable the authentication so let's enable it and set it to passwordless so right here you can see that you can use passwordless or password whichever way you want or you can also use social connections so I have a github application set up over here so I could use that but for this example let's use the passwordless authentication so tap that and then select the passwordless over there and let's click save and now let's go back to localhost 3000 okay so let's click sign in and now since it's a passwordless authentication all we need to do is add our email like this and click login and now it will send us a code to our email so let's open up the email and right here I got the email and let's copy the code from there and paste it in over there and click continue so now since this is my first time logging in it will automatically create an account for us so let's input our name like this and click create account and once that went through it gives us a 404 and that's because it redirected us to the slash profile page if you remember earlier in the env.local file we set this post login redirect to be the slash profile so that's why it's redirecting us over there and let's right now actually create that profile page so we can then display some information from our user and actually verify that we are logged in so I'm going to create a new folder and page inside of the app folder called profile and inside of that the page.js file like this and then I will just add some boilerplate code over here like this so let's for now just return the profile page text and switch to the browser and if we open that page up we can see that the profile page now shows the profile page text and since we made the navigation so the buttons and the links are up there to the layout file over here so we are using the navigation component inside of the layout file we are seeing them right here in the profile page too so now let's actually display some data from the user so I will switch back to the blog post and see I think they had an example over here so we have user profile so we can get the user profile with this get kind server session function as they show over here so what I'm gonna do is actually copy this import over here and paste it in to our profile page like this and then we can also copy this from here and paste it inside of our component so over here what we are doing is importing the get kind server session function and then getting the user information with this get user function as you can see and then the user data will be saved to the user variable and let's print some data from our user like this so we are printing the user name 
and also the user email. So let's save this and switch back to the browser and looks like it displays the name correctly and the email. So we are logged in. And one other way to determine if the user is logged in or not is with this is authenticated function. So we can get it from the kind server session like this. And then if we wanted to, for example, in the profile page display this information only when the user is logged in, we could do it by using this is authenticated function. And let's actually do that. So I will add that code and let's go through it together then like this. So we are calling the is authenticated function. And if it returns true, we will display the user information because the user is logged in and if it's false, we will just display, please log in. So let's save this and switch back to the browser. So right now it shows the user information over here because we are logged in. So next let's actually add the log out button so we can test this out. So let's see the blog post one more time. And you can see that the log out button is also provided by kind. So I'm just gonna copy that HTML from there and go to the navigation and then paste in the logout button over there. And then I will import it up here. And then I will also add some styles for this like this. So I added some Tailwind CSS classes for this. So now if we save this and switch back to the browser, we can see also the logout link and let's try it out. So let's click logout and it redirects us to the front page. And that's again, because inside of our environment variables, we defined that post logout redirect URL is the front page. So now let's try opening the profile page and let's add a link for it first. So in the navigation, I will add a new link like this. So normal Next.js link for this last profile and let's save it and switch back to the browser. And now we can click the profile page and it displays the please login text. So now if we sign in again, input our email, and let's paste in the code from email like this and click continue. And now we are at the profile page and it shows the user information. So it looks like that's working right now. One other place that we can use the is authenticated is this navigation over here. So obviously we don't want to show the sign in and sign up when we are signed in and we don't want to show the logout when we are not logged in. So let's add that. So I go to the VS code and the navigation component. And over here, I will import the get kind server session. And then inside of the navigation component, I will get the is authenticated from that kind server session like this, and then use that to display these links correctly. So let me just type it out and show you after that. Okay, so like this. So all I did was add the is authenticated up here. And if it's true, we want to show the logout link and Otherwise, if it's false, we just want to show the login and register links. Let's save this, switch back to the browser. And now since we are logged in, we only see the logout button. And if we log out, we can see the sign in and sign up buttons. So now we have the basic login and logout functionality working. And I talked about the user management. So if we go back to the kind account and let's start from the home, we can go from organizations, open up our organization. And from there we can click the users. And right here, you can see all your users that are registered for your application or your organization. So right now we only have the one user over here, but if you have multiple signups, they will all appear over here. So the last thing I want to add to our application is for the profile page. So let's sign in. So now we are logged in and we are at the profile page and we can see our information. But the last thing I want to add is a little bit more information about the user and the way we want to display it is actually using something called feature flags. So let's see how to do that. So let's start by adding the user information display down here. So I'm going to go to the VS code and open up the profile page and below the email, I just want to show the JSON representation of this user object. So let's add that like this. So we are basically just stringifying the user object and then displaying it. So let's save it and switch back to the browser. So now we can see all the information that that object has. And let's say that showing this information is something we want to control without having to update our application. So we want to 
maybe show this just for developers or in a designated environment, for example. So how to do that is with feature flags. So let's go to the guide account and I'm gonna go to the homepage. And from here, let's click the releases. And over here, you can add feature flags. So I'm gonna add a new feature flag up here and let's give it a name like this and then a short description and a key. And this is something that we use in the code also. So I'm gonna input that like this and you can have multiple types of feature flags. But for this, we need the Boolean and default value we set false and this override default value in. We want to set the organizations for this example. So what this means is that we can change the feature flag value between organizations. So let's click save. So now the feature flag is created so we can use it inside of our code. So I'm gonna switch back to the VS code and the way we can get a feature flag value is with this helper function get flag. But as you can see, there is also a couple of other helpers. So we can use the get string boolean or integer flag. But since our flag is boolean, we can just use the get boolean flag right here. And then inside of the code, we want to conditionally render this pre tag if the feature flag is set to true. So let's add the code for that. So let's call the get boolean flag. And as a first parameter, we want to pass in the key of the flag. And a second parameter is an object and we want to define a default value for this. So if that flag is not found, we will use this default value for this flag. So let's add that like this and we want to set it to false. So if it's not found, we don't want to show it. And now just conditionally rendering this pre-tag then like this, let's save it. So let's go through it one more time. So we are calling the uh, get boolean flag with the key of our flag. And then if it returns true, so the user JSON is visible, we want to render this pre-tag over here. Okay, so let's save it and switch back to the browser and check out our application. So I will refresh the page. And right now it's still displaying it even though it was false. And that's because we need to log out and log in again in order to update the feature flag value for this user in this session. So let's log out and then login again. Okay, so now we are relogged and we are at the profile page and we can see that we no longer see the JSON representation of the user information. Okay, so now let's test it out if we set the flag value to true. So I'm gonna go to my kind account and go to my organizations and from there open up my organization and right here on the left hand side, click the feature flags. And over here, I can see all my feature flags. And now I want to edit the value of our is user JSON visible feature flag. So I click over here and let's say set it to true and save it. So now it is set true for this organization. So let's switch back to the browser. And now again, if I refresh the page, we still don't see it because we need to relog. So let's do that. And now we are seeing the user information again. So it's using the feature flag to determine if this information down here should be displayed or not. So this is how you can easily add authentication and especially passwordless authentication plus user management to your Next.js 13 application. Personally, I think using kind for the authentication since you get the passwordless authentication also with it is super easy and handy. And I definitely plan on using kind in my future projects also. So actually let me know in the comments what you would like me to build with Next.js 13 and using the kind authentication. I really hope this video was at least somewhat helpful for you and that you learned something new from this. And if you did, please leave a like and also let me know down in the comments.